Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another weekly reading wrap up where we have 19 books to talk about today, which is crazy, but I went on some binging even more than normal. But before that, I got a gift in the mail this morning and I decided I wanted to start with opening that. Um, I got this <laughs> Amazon box, which is full and there was like wrapped packages sticking out of it. And I did look at the one of the cards to see who it was from, but that's it. Because then I was like, well, I'm about to film. So let me just do this. So this is what one of the cards says. So it says, thank you for being an amazing person and supporting me through this crazy journey. I'm so happy to get to know you and hope we can build a cool friendship. Thanks again for everything. From Dr. Taji Huang. So, Thank you so much, Taji. I'm so excited to open these because a bookworm, there's no greater joy than getting a box full of books at your doorstep. So let's open this one. Oh my God. This is a little bit perfect because this is one of the books that I'm going to be talking about this week. <laughs> um, it's Bloodied Hands by Adelaide Forrest which we're going to talk about soon, so I won't tell you everything about it, but this is a mafia series that I binged this week. Um, I found it on TikTok. Um, the next note, couldn't resist, we, you know we love a menage. A menage, okay, what is this? Oh, yes. Oh God, okay, so number, oh my God. This is a Serena Ackroyd, Mass Sinfully Theirs. This is a book I read quite a while ago. It was one of my first Serena Ackroyds, and it is a MMF, but it starts with a married male couple, and one of the men is bisexual, and so his partner, his husband, like, lets him be with women once in a while. It's a twisty story, but I absolutely love the recut. These got new covers recently. Serena redid a lot of her books. And I'm so excited to own like my first Serena Ackroyd. That's beautiful. There's some other books in here we'll just grab. <laughs> okay, this is book three in the series. Wow, I'm so excited to have these. This book is bonkers. We're gonna talk about it. Let's see. Sinfully Mastered. Okay, this is another book in that Naughty Nookie series. That's awesome. And then Forgivable Sins, and this is book two. Okay. Taji, this is so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god. So excited. We're going to talk about these books in just a little bit. Let me see. There's another... Okay, these are just the return info. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is so sweet, and I'm fucking excited about this. Okay. Well, let's get into the books that I read, which now we just so happen to have. Oh my god, they're so beautiful. Okay, so for week uh, 29 of 2021, let's dive into these books. So the first book that I finished was Uncharted by Adriana Anders. This is an arc. Um, I had just read White Out, you know, right before I read this one, and I'm glad that I did it that way. Um, I gave this one four point, or no, I gave this one five stars. Sorry, I was looking at White Out. Um, this book, take, like the end of it kind of overlaps with what uh with what was happening at the end of whiteout um we are with now our heroine leo who is a pilot and she gets sent in to kind of rescue this guy who has something to do with chronos industries and about what is happening in the series i don't want to spoil this series or whatever um, but this one ends up being another survival situation her plane gets um shot down and then she gets rescued by not who she is expecting to find, 
but definitely someone who knows about what's going on, but he has been living off the grid for a long time to kind of hide what he knows and to keep some secrets safe. And they end up needing to get from one point to another point while these guys are chasing them. So a little bit like Whiteout. Um, we are still in kind of a colder environment. We're in Alaska for this one, but there are lots of caves and nooks and crannies and still a lot of sharing the bed space. There's also a, a pet. The pet lives, don't worry. Um, and I just really enjoyed this. I enjoyed it more than Whiteout, even though like I gave Whiteout four and a half stars. This one is sexier in my opinion. The hero is even more just completely gone for the heroine. And I loved this book. It was a ride. It was a ride. I rarely can read an arc from like start to finish when it's so big like that. And I adored this book. I can't wait for it to be out, which I think this one isn't out until September. Um, it was funny because I was reading a lot of arcs, you'll see, that aren't out for a long time instead of the ones that I need to get read, but... I can't help myself so I gave this book five stars and I really loved it and the setup for the third book which I'm sure will be another year is I was like oh I want to know what happens I'm very excited for what more will come in this uh, survival instincts series loved it then I listened to Cruel Paradise by JT Gessinger. Um, I gave this book four stars this f is the follow-up to Beautifully Cruel um, and I wanted to read Cruel Paradise because Carnal Urges, which is about Daddy Declan, <laughs> who I loved, he is a pretty decent part in this one. And it was really fun getting to see who he was before and how he is kind of set up for the position that he's at in Carnal Urges. But this one is actually about, I probably will not remember the name, damn it. I never write the names down because it's just like, whatever. But... Um, this heroine is a group of this kind of like vigilante women who are from privileged homes who like to give back. So they do these like Robin Hood type thieveries and so, or thefts, thefts is the word. And they actually steal a bunch of diapers from one of the warehouses <laughs> that belongs to this Irish mob family. And when our hero finds out who she is he goes after her and becomes obsessed with her but she definitely has some secrets about who she is that don't make her the best option as a paramour for him um, but he doesn't give a fuck um, and also she you know he's gonna have a hard time convincing her that they should be together so the reason I gave this one four stars usually JTS singer is an easy five star for me but I could tell that this heroine just didn't quite work for me because she kind of kept on this like she was punishing the hero a little bit while not hearing him out and there is a certain plot twist in this book that only the heroine's bullheadedness kind of like makes it happen and it was just kind of frustrating at a certain point. Then I read Daring the Doctor which was just a quick little short story 64 pages this is one of my first Jessica Kane but my friend Tiffany over on Instagram she's Neverland Pixie um she showed up on this channel all the time hi Tiffany <laughs> she was binging Jessica Kane last weekend and I just needed kind of a little palate cleanser after I finished these two more serious books so this is an age gap um, this guy's a doctor. Our heroine is wants to go to medical school, but she can't afford it. So right now she's a maid. He wants to instantly wants to take care of her and make her dreams come true. But she's like, I don't want to owe a man anything. And he goes about trying to convince her. There's a little bit of daddy kink. There's a little bit of everything. This is a 64 page quickie, but I gave it four stars because it was fun. And Jessica Kane, she tells a good quickie. That's for sure. <clears throat> Then I read Red Thorns and Black Thorns by Rena Kent. This was another impulse thing. I actually have these like four books that I'm talking about, The Uncharted, Cool Paradise, During the Dr. Red Thorns. I actually did a reading vlog last week about these because I just did a weekend reading vlog, which I will have up here. Um, and Red Thorns came about because my bestie, who is not in the booktube community, Shauna, she was reading this and she's like, this hero is giving me Carter Mahoney vibes. And I was like, whoop. Okay, my antennas went up. Let me try it. The thing is, Rena Kent does a lot of duets. And this duet, in my opinion, should have just been one book. And should have been like part one and part two. 
and there should have been some stuff cut out of it. However, the first book I gave five stars. It was a like bet situation. Um, our heroine is a cheerleader at a college, which she really doesn't want to be, but for reasons she is. And our hero gets bet that he will, um, that he can get her um, to sleep with him. Um, and so they end up going on that, you know, he ends up pursuing that. What I love so much about this first one, there was some like, besides one scene being kind of coercive, it's not the same as a Carter Mahone, like there is no rape in this one. There is some coercive situations. So if you don't like, you know, that kind of stuff, stay away. But it did feel a lot like a Carter Mahoney in the way that they interacted in the way that the mind games were happening. But the thing that really made this first one five stars is that the hero and the heroine interact in primal play, which is a form of BDSM. It's a, it's a kink. It's where you literally let your animal natures come over and one, usually the dom, well, is the dom is like predator and the, and the submissive is prey. And I feel like that was shown so beautiful. I never read, um, predator and prey play done in a book before and it was pro like they had were safe words involved which is something that you know rarely happens with these when you see young people fucking around with kink they never have their safe words in place and it just bothers me and in this case there is a safe word in place and so it makes whatever's going on completely consensual even if it's consensual not consent and there is rape fantasy involved it is all consensual and I love that. I mean, I don't mind if it's the other way when it's fictional, but I really enjoyed it. The The problem for me with the second book is that it had a lot of my pet peeves in it. It also had, uh, it just had my pet peeves in it. That's the reason. That's the reason. It had two of my pet peeves in it. Um, I will say the heroine is Asian American in this. This is an interracial romance. We do see the Yakuza sometimes, which is the Asian mob. Um, and it was interesting. But overall, I give the duet a four star because the second book brought it down so much for me. But I give the first one five stars. And if it didn't have such a crazy cliffhanger, I would even say you could read it as a standalone, but you can't because the cliffhanger it has, you will have to know what goes on. And yeah. But anyway. Maybe it won't bug you as much as it did me because my specific pet peeve is specific to me. Um, then I read Beautiful Sinner by Sarah Kate. I actually have read the first one in this series before. They're not like connected, but they're both like age gap kind of taboo books. This one is a priest romance. Um, our heroine is on a road trip with someone she barely knows in Ireland and she gets left at this bed and breakfast and her passport, her car, her money is all stolen by this person. So this bed and breakfast is run by this brother and sister. The brother is actually the priest of this village, but he runs this bed and breakfast with his sister. And so since our heroine has nowhere to go, she offers to like work in exchange for like room and board until she gets a passport and her stuff from her family. Cause her family, you know, is like, yeah, we'll get this sent over to you, but it still takes a little bit to get a replacement passport. And then even when she gets her passport, she decides she just wants to take some time here with no obligations back at home to just work at this little bed and breakfast. And there's some taboo romance with the priest. It's also a pretty big age gap. I think she's like 20 and he's 42. And I really enjoyed it. I gave this four stars. It was fun. I, I love a little, I love a little twisty uh, priest romance. It also wasn't overly angsty, which is great too. Then I did my wonderful reread of The Rebel by Sophie Lark, marked this beauty all up. Um, this of course was still a five star for me. Um, I'm preparing for The Spy to come out in just about like 10 days, which I'm hoping, you know, I'm on her ARC team, so I should be getting it as soon as she's done. So I still need to do my reread of The Bully, which I plan to do this weekend, most likely. Um, but yeah, this was still amazing. This is book two in the Kingmaker series. If you don't know, Sophie Lark is going to be back on my channel. She's been here before. She will be back on my channel on August 7th so we can talk about the Kingmaker series as a whole. So if you haven't read it yet and you're interested, now be the time, my friends. Now be the time. This is about Miles 
and Zoe and they have they know who each other is but they've kind of just been benign friends oh, I'm gonna hit myself in the head and then this year Zoe is really being pressured by her fiance who is a sadistic asshole but it's a mobbed arranged marriage and Miles decides that he wants her and he decides that he's gonna free her from this relationship so that's what this is about these books could hurt people but they're also beautiful so there we go then I read Hearts Divine by Katherine Wilcher. Um, this is the second book in the Santiago trilogy. This one was okay. This is another scenario where I haven't read the third one yet. I, I will read it soon. I'm, I'm deep in a mafia binge again, so I'll get back to it. But this just didn't work as well for me as I wanted it to because I don't think the series needs to be three books. And like, the problem that the hero has and the issues that they get into, I just think are overdone for me. They're overdone. So, yeah. But anyway, this one continues it. This is about a, the daughter of a DEA who, a DA who at the beginning of the first one, she gets kidnapped by this hero. Um, or she trades herself so that he won't kill her father. She, you know, it's kind of a Beauty and the Beast thing with that one. And then she ends up stuck with him on his, basically his compound. Um, he's a member of the Colombian uh, cartel and, or a high rank, he's like second in command of that. Um, and yeah, there's lots of betrayals and feels and lots of fucking and it's fine. Um, I really loved the first one. This one again, I just, I didn't like some of the twists that were happening but I will still read the third one because I want to see how it all plays out for everybody then we get to talk about one of these beautiful new books I got I read bloodied hands by Adelaide Forrest this is the first book in the Belandi crime syndicate um and I found this author on TikTok I saw one of you know where they're like do you want to read about this and then I was like fuck yes I want to read about this um so this one is about this is a second chance mafia romance okay so our heroine um ivory she used to date mateo when they were in high school um then he cruelly broke up with her like in a really mean way um not soon not too long after they have sex for the first time and he just broke her heart so for the last 12 years she's hardly seen him then one day a bank that she's at is getting robbed by some bad people and one of them recognizes her and says oh my god please tell Mateo that we didn't know that this was your bank we're so sorry upon reflection it's a little crazy to me that he's hasn't been keeping tabs on her but yet people knew who she was because then a little further into the book he asks his one of his guys to find out everything they know about Ivory and it's like well if people knew enough to know who she was don't you know something about her I don't know but I didn't care because then what happened she does go to visit him and say why do these people know who I am what are you doing and he's like well I've had a word out that no one is to touch you because you're mine and though he has stayed away from her all these years to keep her safe he takes her coming back into his life as the goat light he's like that's it we're happening and he basically takes over her life. And this is a possessive, bossy, fucking crazy alpha. I gave this one four and a half stars. Um, there is, um, this has a breeding kink in it for sure. There are decisions made by the hero about protection that will probably ruffle some feathers. He's very possessive. It's all the things like, this has trigger warnings in it. She writes a really great thing. Let me see if I can find it. It says this, this series contains dark elements, including over the top anti-heroes who do as they please. Read as your own discretion. That's about it. That's about it. This was book one. Then I read Lions and Lace by M Megan McKinney. Okay, this has a beautiful step back. This is a book that I have heard lots of great things about. This one came out in 1992. Um, and yeah, I'd heard really great things about it. This takes place in the Gilded Age in New York. And it is about a heroine who, um, her uncle is her guardian. 
and he is horrible to her and he they happen to lose all of their money to Trevor Sheridan who is an Irishman who is trying to make his way in society and not being let in because he's a mick and he is made man and they don't want him and so our heroine Alana goes to him to beg for their money back so that because she has a sister that she needs to take care of and if he you know takes all their money her sister won't be taken care of anymore and he decides to blackmail her into a marriage instead and have her influence help him get his sister a husband which is what his sister wants and so he forces her into this marriage the beginning of this book really reminded me of a Klaipes hero and there was a lot about Trevor that I wanted to like okay but when I tell you that he was too mean for me he was too mean for me he did not bend or show any affection for her until the last page of this book and I just can't handle that like I can handle an asshole hero hell fucking oh hello and I can handle that in a historical like I like it but I need to see their squishy underbelly and I need to see them you know trying and by the time that a couple is having sex I need it to be clear that they both have feelings for each other and I didn't buy it I didn't understand how the heroine started to fall for him because at a certain point it's like she's in love with him but hates that he doesn't love her and I'm like what is there to love about this man like what has he done or shown as affection towards her even when because there is a misconception that the hero is under about the heroine and why he wants to like punish her and punish everyone in society but even when it is confirmed to him that she did not do this thing and that she in fact is not like everyone else he doesn't change his attitude towards her one fucking bit he continues to treat her the way he's been treating her the whole time um and i just couldn't handle it guys i couldn't i read this whole damn book the audiobook was on uh i listened to it on scribd and i was honestly like heart sick by this hero by the time it was over like i didn't even love the heroine that much but i thought she deserved better um, I will be reading the next book because it is about the sister who is being like she stuff is happening to the sister but I ooh, this one just it doesn't spark the same love for me that like Lord of Scoundrels who also has a very unlikable hero or some of the clay Pest heroes who are tortured but they have so much passion in them that it's beautiful like this hero even has a mistress that he just like waves in her face for a good portion of the book and yeah I just I didn't so I gave this three stars and I feel like it was generous from me personally and I'm sorry because damn it when I showed I was reading that book so many people are like oh it's my favorite historical and I'm like I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm only one woman and I like what I like so I think part of it too is that reading a historical like that where it's an alpha male but who's being such an asshole and like cruel and at the same time reading mafia men who are cruel and are an asshole but worship their women's feet like worship at their feet it's just hard because it's like both men are assholes but one is worshiping his woman and the other one is making her feel like shit all the time and that's just difficult it's just it's how the cookie crumbles all right then I read forgivable sins which oh this one was my favorite this was a five-star book I loved it this one is about um, Lino I think Angelino is his name and um, is it let me just find her name Samara Samara is Jewish and her and Lino have been friends for 20 years since they were little um, he had a very abusive father, um, a bigoted father, a racist father, mm. and Lino would often go to her home and feel loved. <laughs> um, 
but he was also friends with her brother and also his father was like you're not marrying a Jewish woman no way no how and at the same time that Mateo from the last book had to push away Ivory he really had to keep Samara at friendship length at the time when he was young and by the time that him and Mateo had amassed enough power that they could do whatever the fuck they wanted Samara had already married someone else now at the beginning of this book she's getting a divorce from that man because he's abusive um, trigger warnings for spousal abuse and rape so you can see what was happening to her she's kept that a secret and then you know she's working on this divorce and her husband has a gambling problem and he's wanting to get money from her um, even though they're like separated and he breaks in and he almost kills her and the family maid the family housekeeper is like enough is enough and she calls Lino and the cat's out of the bag and now Lino knows that while well, he's been biding his time because he wanted to wait till her divorce was official and all that was done he was ready to go for his woman but he was waiting he was trying to be respectful and now he's like fuck that we're doing this my way and he goes in and scoops up his woman and brings her home and there's still a lot of the same like possessive over the top stuff because that's the way Adelaide Forrest writes her men but this one just melted my heart you know I I highly recommend because I've had a few friends that as soon as I started talking about this book they started reading it and maybe this didn't work for them you know the plot gaps I mentioned didn't work or the hero you know his level of obsessive obsessiveness didn't work I highly recommend you try the second one because this was so different I have read s none none well one the Air by Sophie Lark may be the only other friends to lovers mafia that I've read um, that pops into my head anyway. This was so beautiful because there's so many things that he has done over time to show his love that, you know, she just couldn't see them, you know. <sighs> I really loved this, guys. I really love this a lot <laughs> I gave this one five stars it was so good then Maggie Cole came through for me she came through for me and I got to read Brutal Defender Ah! <laughs> this is book eight in the Mafia Wars if you don't know Maggie Cole is also gonna be on my channel she will be here on uh, July 31st um, which is two weeks from today and we will be talking about Savage Tracker which is my favorite book in the series but as well as you know the mafia wars and her writing in general it's gonna be amazing um but yeah this one is an O'Malley book um this one is about Killian and I can't say too much because this one isn't out until November <laughs> I think this one's out in November 1st so we'll talk more about it when we get there but I did give this one five stars and I loved this couple and this was the first couple that was um, an arranged marriage. Number eight in a series. And this is the first one that was an arranged marriage, which I just love. Um, but it's between, um, I think it's Italian and Irish. Is it the Italian and Irish or Russian and Irish? I think it's Italian. And they are horrible to each other. It reminded me a lot of Brutal Prince at the beginning <laughs> for just like the things they're trying to do to piss the other one off but it was a good time it was a good time I love the women camaraderie in this series so much so loved it then I read number three in the Bellani crime syndicate this is grieved loss this one <laughs> this book you guys I don't know what the fuck this was <laughs> but excuse me it was epic okay so this one is about Kala and Riker and Kala lost her husband a year ago she has a five six year old and a two-year-old children and she's just been making her way her her husband was a police officer 
Little did she know her husband was actually a dirty police officer who was working with the Balondi crime syndicate and he died because one of their, like it was an accident that he died. He was just doing a check for the crime syndicate and he got shot and killed. Now our hero, Riker, he is an enforcer and a murderer and psychopath for the Balondi crime syndicate. He's a made man in the family and he has been watching Kala for four years because when they first approached her husband to work for them, his job was to scope everything out. And he's been watching Kala since then and biding his time. And he was never going to step in when she was still married. Um, but her husband's dead and he's waited and given her time to mourn. And now he's ready to make his move. And the man has a plan, y'all. He has his mansion all tricked out. He's made an amazing little race car room for the little boy and a unicorn princess room for the little girl. And he has tricked everything out. And then he goes in and gets his woman. And there's nothing she can do about it. This is a captor captive book. The dude takes a woman and her two kids. And the thing is, his whole family knows. And he wins over her small amount of family members very quickly and just takes over her life oh my god <laughs> it's fucking bonkers and i was here for every second of it because adelaide forrest writes a fucking book so there you go then i read a couple more arcs i read twisted games by hannah wong which comes out on the 29th um, I got put on the art team for this and I'm so happy I did. This is book two in her Twisted series. I think there's four books planned for this. This is about our princess and her bodyguard. I gave this five stars. It gave me so many Princess Diaries 2 vibes, if you know what I mean, but like darker and sexier. This isn't, you know, just like I feel like Twisted Love was actually darker than this one was because the thing that really made this darker is that it's the sexy times are crazy. But this is really kind of like enemies to friends to lovers thing because he is her bodyguard for two years throughout the story. Like in the beginning, we're kind of we see when they first meet her normal bodyguard while she's going to college because um, she stays away from her country because she wants to live as normal of a life as she can and her bodyguard is going on paternity leave and so that's when we meet Reese who steps in as her bodyguard and just comes in with all these ideas and things that he's gonna do and she's like whoa I've been doing things just fine I don't need to change but things start to change like there is some things that happen with her family that cause her to have to go back home and as her relationship with Reese is evolving and things happening things get tricky. Um, I don't want to spoil anything about this. Absolutely not. But I adored this book. I liked Twisted Love, but I gave that a four star because the ending and like the conflict at the end, I was just like, okay, whatever. For the story that's set up, the way that the third act conflict and resolution plays out was perfection. This was amazing. I was real nervous that we were going to get a situation kind of like the first one where I was going to love everything leading up to it and then just be kind of like meh at the end. That did not happen in this one. It was a slow burn and things are happening and things are building and they're building their relationship and then it was great. This was five stars. I absolutely loved it. I can't wait to read more in this series because the next couple is set up at the end of this one and I'm just very impressed and I feel like you can tell just how much she's grown from the first to the second book because there was some things that were smoothed out and the way the relationship played out was, it was great. I loved it. Then I got to read Electric Idol by Katie Robert, <laughs> which I can't say anything about y'all because this book doesn't come out until January, but the arcs were up on Edelweiss. They haven't went up on NetGalley yet, so there still may be an option. For that, um, Katie said they will still be going up there. But I saw them go up on Edelweiss, and I haven't got a ton of books through Edelweiss yet, but I was like, I am going to ask for this book in every avenue. I emailed the publisher already, but then I got approved with Edelweiss, so I was just like, okay, cool. Um, but I loved this book. I gave it five stars. 
I still think I like Neon Gods better. That was a six star read for me. But I loved this. And so the setup of this is that Euros, Eros is sent to kill Psyche by his mother. And instead of murdering her, he offers her a marriage so that he can protect her. His reasons for doing that are Psyche is one of the few people who've shown him kindness. So that's the inciting incident is that he's injured for reasons and she happens at a party to notice him coming in with like blood on him and so she patches him up. Well then some people see that happen and his mother hears about it and his mother is like, we cannot have our family be connected with the Demetrio sisters. So you need to kill her. And he doesn't want to because this is the only woman who's shown him kindness. Psyche is a plus size fashion icon, actually, um, who makes a lot of her uncle or has clothes custom made for her. Um, and Eros is just so in love with her and some things I can say without you know spoiling this and also it's so far away if people still remember me saying this the thing that I love about this the most is how Katie Robert wrote Psyche where she's not embarrassed of her body she is proud of who she is but that doesn't mean you don't feel uncomfortable sometimes when clothes aren't made for you or when people say something mean you're not 100% confident 100% of the time, but that also doesn't mean that you have body hate. Because guess what? Even the most perfect body, they have those issues too. And so just because you'll have moments of like, oh, I don't like my arms in this, or oh, I don't like how I look at that angle, who cares? You're still a well-rounded, healthy human if you have those thoughts sometimes. You know what I mean? So I thoroughly enjoyed this. I can't wait to read it again. And I'm sorry y'all can't read it until January. But I'm not sorry that I read it. <laughs> so. Then I read A Guy Walks Into My Bar by Lauren Blakely. I went on a bit of a deep dive into um, narrators this week. I found an old podcast. I mean, I haven't seen a ton of like, they have some newer stuff. They, they're still going. But I found some old episodes of this podcast called Audibly Addicted that has interviews with narrators as well as authors who pick their narrators specifically or like write books for narrators specifically. And Lauren Blakely is really well known for doing that. A lot of her books are audibly audible exclusive. And there was this book that she wrote specifically for Joe Arden and Shane East to narrate together. So this is a male-male romance and it's set in a world where there's literally no homophobia, there's nobody to gain say them or nay say them, and it's more just about can they make their worlds mesh. Because our hero, one of the heroes, um, his name went out of my brain! Shit! The Shane East character, what's his name? Fitz and... I can't remember, it just went out of my head. But he is, he owns a bar in England, and Fitz is a hockey player from New York who happens to be in England helping his sister set up at her um, college that she's gonna be going to, and he's staying there for a week. And he walks in to the bar of <laughs> our hero, and they just can't stop flirting with each other. And it's beautiful. This is a full cast audiobook. Um, it has a lot of Lauren Blakely's like normal narrators and it's beautiful and it's so sexy and it is a bit of a fairy tale in the sense that this is very low angst. It's just all about like, okay, we've met this person. Oh my God, I think I'm in love. Oh my God, I can't live without them. And it happens within a week. So that's what I mean by fairy tale. And this was... Oh man, this was sexy as hell. So I highly recommend I gave this five stars. And it was exactly what I needed because as you could tell, I read quite a few angsty mafia books this week and that was just the perfect thing to add. Then I read book four in the Bellani Crime Syndicate, which is Shielded Wrongs. And this one is was so fun. This was about Sadie and... Oh, I can't remember his name. Gosh darn it. What's his name? 
I don't remember. But it's another like enforcer for or a made man for the syndicate and Sadie is the best friend of like the heroines that we've seen so far and she runs she works at her father's gym and helps teach women self-defense she's taught self-defense to some of our other ladies in this series and yeah it's it's pretty cool but what happens is this book starts with her being attacked in her home she's able to defend herself and, and subdue the guy um because that's what she does as a job and then mateo our boss man he assigns one of his men to be her protector and she does not want that but mateo is like girl i have to because my wife would not let me live in peace if something happens to you <laughs> so she gets assigned a protector and like the other Balani men before him he immediately becomes obsessed with his woman and could not imagine letting her go so it was great i gave that one four stars then i read the duke goes down by sophie jordan this book comes out on july 27th but sometimes mass market paperbacks are put out early at barnes and noble and when i went to the store yesterday happened to grab this um so i read this arc through edelweiss avon like only approves me on edelweiss but it's okay i'm not bitter about it or anything it's fine um but this book is about um perry butler who used to be a duke but it was discovered that he is not legitimate because his parents were married after his birth and then imogen bates who is the daughter of a vicar and she has her and perry have known each other most of their lives and now that Perry is like destitute, basically, he's lost everything. He is trying to find a witch wife, a rich a witch wife, <laughs> trying to find a rich wife. And Imogen is spreading rumors about him because he was a bit mean to her as a child. And by a bit, I literally mean he was mostly indifferent to her. And she's really held that as a grudge for a very long time. And if you can't tell from my tone, I was a little disgusted with this heroine. I'm not going to lie to you. The rumors she's spreading, including he's a bad kisser, to he has flatulence, to he has the pox, which should sound funny. Like, the scene where she tells someone he has flatulence, I was like, this is supposed to be funny. But honestly, it made the heroine look petty and bratty. And she's like 28 years old, and she's trying to ruin this guy's future. And even more than that, there was the revelation in the third act that causes like the third act breakup. Number one, I don't even know how they ended up together because how they start having sex, how, like where was the lead up to it? I don't understand. I was like, hero, you should not be with this woman because she's a petty bitch and you shouldn't be with her. So I said it and guess this is why Avon doesn't want to approve me because I haven't been liking like if it isn't from an author that I already love I have like Sophie Jordan I have an up and down relationship with anyway because the stories that she tells I just don't always find that they hit with me but I was honestly like trying to see what was redeemable about this book and then I looked up a lot of the reviews the early reviews that have come out and a lot of people were agreeing with me so I didn't feel too bad anymore this was supposed to be funny and delightful but it was so slow <clears throat> and there was these flashbacks to their childhood that I was like, what is the point of this flashback? Like, what is it trying to show me? There was someone in a flashback who physically hurt her, not like hurt her, but embarrassed her. And she's nicer to that person than she is to our hero who, again, he was indifferent and yeah, he was a little rude, but he is, was never a bad person. And she was just extremely petty about the whole thing. It was very disappointing to me. Very disappointed. So I gave this three stars because I, I don't like to rate a book about to come out lower than that. But I almost did. And then the last book, which I finished last night, <laughs> right before I was going into bed, was another Rena Kent. So I read All the Lies, which is part of another duet that's happening the same time as the thorns duet that i read at the beginning of the week 
And I listened to this one because it's by Kai Kennecott and um, Wen Ross, who is a narration couple. They're actually married. They're adorable. Um, and I was bored by this one. This one, I was really intrigued for this story too because I liked hearing about these characters in the other duet. But the story that was being set up is this heroine has amnesia and she had a twin sister who is died like we know that from the prologue but like when she wakes up she doesn't remember any of that and she has this guy who is her fiance and she's only 21 and this is her fiance and he's like i'm gonna punish you my little monster and then there was a reveal on the very last page that's supposed to be the cliffhanger into the next book and literally I was listening to this until I went to bed last night and I was like, okay, okay. So I gave this one three and a half stars and I, I don't know if I'll, I'm, if I read the second half, it'll only be because I want to listen to Kai and when some more, because this just wasn't working for me. So the week did end with a little bit of a fizzle, but I had a lot of bang bangs going on throughout the week. So this is what I read this week. Again, Taji, thank you so much for the wonderful gifts. I am so happy with these books. You can't even believe it. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of my channel members for all your support. Um, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. I put up new videos like this every Sunday, as well as I have recommendations and other things to go up throughout the week. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.